No, this can't be the right code. Yes, this will be the solution. Expensive jewellery and a letter. I suspected that this box was not only playing pleasant tunes. Good to see you, Miss Diaz Palencia. Look, I'm sure this will interest you. My father's writing. Will you excuse me, Professor? Of course, Miss. I won't disturb you. I'll leave you. I'll be back soon. This must be Alonso Garcia de la Riga's palace. Imposing building, but it looks like it is locked. Is there really no one at home? The garden of the palace. Maybe I will manage to get into the house from here. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Good afternoon. I am looking for Mr. Alonso Garcia de la Rica. Please announce my arrival. I am Professor Hunt from London. I'm sorry, sir. I can't. You can't? And why? It is absolutely necessary I talk to him. I'm sorry, but Mr. Garcia de la Rica is not in. Oh. So he has truly departed. So you already know. Well, he has already departed with his son. And... and when do they return from the trip? I'm expecting them next Wednesday, sir. Please, come back next week. Goodbye. Please wait. Maybe you could help me. Really? Uh, Hugo. Just call me Hugo. Thank you, Hugo. What can I help you with? I need help in a delicate matter. I'm at your disposal. You must have heard that the young Francisco Candelas was imprisoned on charges of theft. Naturally, I have. A very sad case. May I ask you what you think of it? Look, I'm not in the habit of stating my opinion. 
And then, Professor, if I am right, you are not an investigator or someone like that. And I have stated everything I know into Rayoyo's record book. I see. You are immensely loyal to your master. Well, thank you, Hugo. I don't think you can help. Wait! You must really understand why I am distrustful. I can't have known which side you are on, Professor. Now, something tells me that you are asking for help from me to have the Candelas boy acquitted. Well, uh... Because I have to admit that I am really sorry about all that happened. And I don't believe at all that that nice boy is a thief. I would be glad to help if I can. I don't know if you can, but you could try. As a first step towards getting Francisco out, it is essential that I talk to him to get the details from him. However, the police sergeant won't let me near him unless Mr. Garcia de la Rica releases an authorization for me. I would be grateful if you pressured the master of the house in a telegram to do so. I see. Well, it is absolutely impossible. I have no idea where and how that telegram would reach him. But uh, there may be another solution. But of course, I would be risking my job. As I have mentioned, I would be grateful. Uh, I can very convincingly forge Alonso Garcia de la Rica's signature. Great. Would you do it? I think so, yes. I'm not saying it doesn't bother me that such a treasure can be stolen from this house just like that, but to condemn an innocent boy just because someone must be made a scapegoat, deep inside my sense of justice protests. Though I had thought that this ability had long ago died in me, being in this position. You are a decent man, Hugo, and in gratitude... Please, don't give me any money, Professor. But you could help me to make money. I can promise that. How can I help, then? I have a stamp. My brother, who lives in France and is an experienced stamp collector, says that it is not a worthless specimen. But for me, it is. As long as it is a stamp. Where could I sell it for you? There is an antique dealer nearby, a certain Pablo Arriaga. Around the middle of Calais de Aranjuez. He is the only one in the area who also deals in stamps. But why don't you do it, Hugo? The reason is simple, Professor. The origin of the stamp is doubtful, so to say. And then, such a dealer, besides being a potential spy, can easily cheat a simple butler like myself. But not an English traveler. You understand me, Professor, don't you? I understand. How much is this stamp worth? According to my brother, it is worth at least 1,600 pesetas. But you know what? If you get 1,500 out of that dealer, I'd be happy. He wouldn't give me more than 1,000, that's for sure. Will you do it for me? Of course I will. May I ask you what kind of stamp this is, and where it comes from? You know, I don't want to get into any trouble. Don't worry, Professor. There's no danger here. I discovered a book for myself when I was cleaning the library that contained an envelope. An empty envelope folded in which the stamp lay unused, but nothing else. Some writing? A letter? Message? No, nothing. Maybe somebody wanted to post the book itself to a distant friend, because it would have fit in the envelope. And then there's a second copy of the book in the library. Hmm, interesting. Do you have any idea whose book that might have been? One thing is sure. It's not Mr. Alonso's. He does not read books on wine production. It must certainly be his father-in-law's who gave his old library to the son-in-law upon the marriage of the late Mrs. Alma Garcia de la Rica. The bookshelves looked handsome in the brand new palace. Mr. Rosel Martino was a lord, and he was interested in a famous vineyard region. But the book and the stamp, judging from their age, could also have been his father's. Why? How old is that stamp? It comes from 1854. 
so it is exactly 50 years old. According to my brother, it is a rarity because of its color. A stamp with the value of one real with a coat of arms. Very few of them were made in light blue. The normal version may be worth perhaps 50 to 60 pesetas. But this one here is a small fortune. Aha, now I understand. Thank you for telling me. Hugo, could I have that book too, together with the stamp? You said there was a duplicate. Maybe no one will miss it if I take it. Why not, Professor? I have never seen Mr. Alonso take down a single book off the shelves. What is more, I found this one behind a row of books when I was doing the cleaning. I'll find it by the time you're back. But are you interested in wine production in Spain, Professor? Who knows, my friend? Who knows? It is a beautiful sword indeed, but I was never particularly interested in weapons. I don't know much about them either. And I have to say this attitude can be tolerated a lot, even here, in the homeland of the famous Blade of Toledo. Although it is neither very popular nor common. Few people have visited the palace recently, but all regarded the Candela sword highly. More than one offered large sums for it. Mr. Fernandez, a retired general, actually fell in love with it. And Count Hungria, the playboy, and Ariaga, the dealer, both admired it. However, Mr. Alonso would not part with the treasure for any amount of money. A good butler either speaks well of his employer, or says nothing at all. Then at least tell me something good about him, Hugo. I can't say much good. You know, Everything changed some years ago. Everything ended with the sudden death of Mrs. Alma Garcia de la Rica. The light and comfort left the house forever, just as it left Mr. Alonso's eyes. A promising political career fell apart, and friendships fell prey to bitterness. This man is no longer the man he was ten years ago, Professor. He won't speak to anyone except his son, and when he does, he is crude and grumpy. He is feared around Toledo, but he has considerable influence in Madrid as well. It seems his artlessness increases his authority. Francisco is a decent, hard-working young man. He had been working in the house for weeks, making and repairing knobs, putting bars on the windows in the back. He arrived on time every morning, and he left in the evening only after he had finished the day's work. Naturally, Mr. Alonso was irritable with him too, but he was never bothered by this. He always behaved respectfully. Could he see the famous sword? Of course. The sword hung over the landing in a central place, and he passed it every day. To tell you the truth, I saw him admiring the sword more than once, even caressing it. Oh. And have you perhaps told this to the police? Unfortunately, yes. But all this was perhaps nothing more on his part than a natural manifestation of resigned attachment. Yes, I know. I, I feel I owe that boy. The old swordsmith? He wasn't a rare visitor to the house earlier. Then the friendship stopped when all cheerfulness stopped. The old Candelas brought the sword to Mr. Alonso around then. I never understood his purpose. I don't understand it to this day. Francisco's mother? I don't know her personally. The painter's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. No, I don't remember meeting her. But she is said to be a very pretty woman. The young Aurinho has been referring to her lately as his future bride. Well, I don't envy such a vain guy's future bride at all. The painter was a great man. May he rest in peace. Traveled around the world, a person of European thinking, not like some of the backward characters here in the area. He had a good understanding of and was interested in everything. Be it painting, music, photography, history, politics, sports, 
He used to be a regular visitor in our house some time ago. And I had the good fortune of having longer conversations with him in the garden several times. Mr. Diaz Palencia highly appreciated the garden, which is under my care. Thank God I have little business with the police. But I wouldn't have much to talk about with this Rayoyos. <laughs> I consider him a rude man. Fortunately, nothing much happens in this neighborhood. Not enough for us to require a sharp and commanding policeman. Innocent character. Although, I used to be uneasy about him. Mr. Alonso happened to say once that one had to be careful with people like him because they are usually recruited to become spies. They see everything and know everything. But I have known Domingo too long to believe it. May I ask what a French butler is doing serving a Spanish master? Well, it is a long and unpleasant story. Please, don't ask me about it. Something tells me you weren't planning on this profession when you were young. Come on. Is there anyone who plans on being a butler? But you are right. I used to be on the other side of things at home for a long time, so to say. Then something happened. I'm doing penance, Professor. Yeah, it should be enough now. I only dare to say so much because, on the one hand, you are a stranger. On the other hand, we have become accomplices. Do you understand me? Of course. And you can count on my secrecy. Thank you for your help, Hugo. I'll be back soon. I'll be waiting for you, Professor. Meanwhile, I'll prepare what you've requested. See you later. Let's see if I still remember something from my student days when I experimented with acting as a supporting actor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to the gentleman. What would you like? I was just passing by. You know, I'm only stopping by this city, meeting an old friend in Valencia, a rich aristocrat. You must have heard of him, Don Diego de Mora y Aragon. Oh, Don Diego is an enormous authority among antique collectors. So you are his good friend. What an honor. Well, yes. If I'm not mistaken, you are an English gentleman? Indeed. I've arrived from London. My name is Hunt, Samuel Hunt. I am a collector as well. Although I did not plan to buy in the city of Toledo, but it so happens my associate has been feeling unwell and I thought I should not let the opportunity to buy something beautiful for my collection pass me by. Someone recommended you. Oh, such an honor, Mr. Hand. I'm pleased to offer my services. If you also need accommodation, I can offer one of the guest rooms of my humble home. Thank you, Mr. Ariaga, but I already have accommodation. You know, the local policeman was so kind as ah, to... so you are staying at the Hotel Mayoral, a very pleasant place. Sergeant Riojo's ankle is the owner. Indeed. I would like to have a look around your shop, if I may. Oh, all this junk won't suit your tastes. However, I have some treasures which I have been keeping exactly for customers with such high standards as you have, Mr. Hand. So you know my taste. Look. An English gentleman, who is Don Diego's friend, would be more satisfied with something special than with a gaudy piece of junk. You've sparked my interest, Mr. Ariaga. Are you talking about very special goods? You know, some of them are so special that many people are searching for them, even the authorities. If you know what I mean, Mr. Hand. Gee, I understand what you're getting at. I think you must have an exciting collection. 
We could have a look at it presently. Well, if possible, I would not like to be hasty about it. You know, these are really delicate cases. Please, don't be offended. Although it is far from me to suppose that you are not what you have claimed yourself to be. Perhaps you're asking me to identify myself. No, for heaven's sake, Mr. Hand, we all carry secrets which we should not make public. But money has no scent. So if I'm not offending you, I would like to see that you are able to pay, Mr. Hand. Well, you have surprising methods, but I understand. Naturally, I have no considerable amount on me. No problem. Sir, please, return any time, even at night, when you can prove that your intentions are serious and I promise to show you paradise. All right. And of course, I'm counting on your full confidentiality. Naturally. Come to think of it, since I did not plan on this trip, I am not carrying cash with me. I would urgently need some money to spend. Are you perhaps interested in stamps as well? You are at the best place, Mr. Hand. I'm the only antique dealer in the neighborhood who is also an expert in stamps. I might help. This is an old Spanish stamp. You must be familiar with it. It is not of small value. Oh, a light blue one real stamp from the middle of the last century. Well, you really seem to be a connoisseur. Would you buy it from me? Yes, I think so. By all means. I am prepared to pay at least 1,000, even 1,200 pesetas. Look. I was thinking of 1,900 pesetas. I won't take less by any means. Sir, this is really a rarity. But believe me, I cannot give you more than 1,450 pesetas for it. Sorry. No. Then I'll find another option. As you please, Mr. Hand. Did you say 1,700? I said 1,500. But due to the prospect of your future purchase, Mr. Hand... Great, I was thinking of 1,600 as well. It's a deal. Mm, well, yes. All right, 1,600 pesetas. Because you're a real gentleman. I knew we'd managed to reach an agreement. You know, Mr. Ariaga, as a stranger I feel somewhat lost hereabouts. I have made acquaintances with some people today. I feel that your way of thinking is rather similar to mine. Would you be so kind as to give me some information about these people? I don't know if I know them, but I'd be glad to help you. So you have heard about it, Mr. Hand. Unfortunate case. I am sorry. I don't know any details. And I'm not interested. The criminal is behind bars and will soon have his due punishment. It is said that the sword has not been found. Really? I don't know about it. How should I know? They also say it is a pretty sword. Perhaps exactly Juan Candalas's work. Yes, I had the opportunity to see it in the owner's house, but unfortunately I didn't observe it thoroughly enough. That was a mistake, given what a meticulous expert you are, Mr. Ariaga. Oh, so you have made the acquaintance of the most beautiful angel of the area. A really kind person, although we are only on greeting terms. And lucky, too. It is said that she will soon marry the well-to-do Eugenio Garcia de la Rica, a young man who has a serious political career ahead of him. It's a pity you cannot meet Salvador, the painter. He has died recently. I'm sure you would have found common interests. You know, he lived in England for a long time. He visited noble society. There is a rumor that his daughter's mother was a noble woman. Although, you know, there is so much gossip in a small city like this. But it would be a mistake to believe everything one hears. You've heard about the young blacksmith. Everyone says he is a blessed young man. 
But have they also mentioned that he is in prison right now? Because he stole from his employer, a rich man? Well, the coin has two sides, Mr. Hand. One cannot choose one's neighbors, Mr. Hand. Especially my fellow poor and modest people are burdened by this curse. Although there used to be a time when that woman respected me, she has not bothered to even greet me for three years now. Despite the fact that I swear I haven't done anything wrong. I was selling their work too, but the family blamed me for not being able to sell their swords and daggers. The interest has simply decreased. He was the last descendant of the famous swordsmith family, renowned for their sword craftsmanship. Unfortunately, there was less and less demand for his works. Unlike his father's, Juan Candela's works are well known by collectors all over the world. Maybe you have heard of them, Mr. Hand. They call him the Blade Master. He was a real artist. God bless him. After his death, the weapons he made became even more expensive. Alonso's palace is on La Mancha Square. He's an excellent man, influential, authoritative, and moreover, he has a sense of artistic objects. He buys a lot from me, a man with a very good taste. I was afraid he would move away for a longer time, because there was a rumor that he would be ambassador to a country in South America. However, the plan fell through for some reason. Nowadays, his son, Eugenio, has similar plans. Mr. Alonso's butler, he comes from France. He has a real poker face. You could easily imagine he is hiding something or is running from his past. Stay clear of him, Mr. Hunt. The policeman? Well, I haven't had much business with him. Thank God. I think he is the kind of character that God created precisely to be a policeman. Who? Domingo? I don't know him. Thank you for your kindness, Mr. Arriaga. As I have promised, I will soon return, and we will talk about the details of the purchase. May we have the pleasure, Mr. Hand. See you later. Oh, the door is open. Perhaps Hugo won't be angry if I simply enter the garden. Hugo? Hmm, this garden is very pretty and fits this rich palace.
can't deny that this butler knows how to live. Hugo, I have good news. I managed to make a deal with the arts dealer. I sold your stamp. Oh, oh really? Well, I am very grateful for you, Professor. May I ask how much you got for it? You wanted to have 1500 for it, didn't you? Well, I brought you that amount. You are an excellent businessman, Mr. Hunt. Thank you. Thank you. And now, I will give you what I promised. Here you are. The permission in Mr. Alonso's abrupt style. The sergeant won't doubt it was written by the master. Are you certain that the writing is sufficiently similar? I am. How shall I say? It's not the first time that I have used this ability of mine, sir. Mm-hmm. I believe I understand. I hope it is successful. And one more thing. The book. You asked for the book I found a stamp in. Here you are. It's yours. Tell me if it is of any use to you. Although I wouldn't be the one to help you when you want to buy a vineyard in the La Mancha region. Thank you very much indeed, Hugo. The merchant is a sly criminal. A mean man is hiding behind his false modesty. They say his friends are from the underworld. Armed guards watch his sleep at night. Of course, you know the town gossip. But be careful nevertheless, Professor. If you allow me to suggest, always take his words with a grain of salt. Look, they aren't gone yet. All right, Professor. It will be as Mr. Alonso requested. You can talk to that blacksmith's assistant whenever you wish to. That is, as long as he is there, because once they come for him from Madrid, this paper will be of no use. Go ahead. The corridor door is open. What I think of the dealer? Do you know that we have had anonymous reports from here and there that strange people come to visit him, and he has connections in the criminal underworld? But I must say, I keep an eye on him, and I haven't caught him in any misconduct. 
and then you cannot just hold somebody responsible because of who he is friends with. It is easy to believe the town gossip, but where is the proof? Do you understand? The proof! That's what's missing in these cases. Tangible proof. Like in the case of Francisco Candelas. Yes. No, no, that is an entirely different case. But if there were proof there, maybe it would be a different situation. The French butler is a lord among the lords, I tell you, professor. He holds his nose so high up, it's as if he weren't serving Mr. Alonso, but vice versa. Mr. Alonso, whom I respect deeply for his achievements, knowledge and birth, once told me what he thinks of sin. He said that it is poverty that breeds sin in people, need and despair. And it is always the rich who are abused then. Very wise thoughts. I have come to see more clearly since then. I keep one eye on the poor and the other on the rich. You always have to protect those more who have more to lose, right, Professor? Well... <laughs> Believe me, such wisdom is worth more than an excellent cigar. And I really like cigars, you know? Are you Senor Candelas? Yes, I am. But who are you? Some detective? Are you already taking me to Madrid? My name is Hunt. Professor Samuel Hunt from the British Museum. We don't know each other, but I know a secret of yours that only very few know. That is why I'm here. Secret? Is that how you want to get false testimony from me? I won't be fooled by your tricks, sir. I didn't steal that cursed sword. Calm down, my friend. I want to help you, but you must help me too. What do you want from me? First of all, more accurate information, young Candelas. I am ready to believe that you are innocent, but it is not easy to prove. Are you going to be my lawyer, Mr. Hunt? Perhaps Carmen asked you to be my lawyer? No. Not quite. Believe me, it is important for me personally that you be set free soon. This is getting mysterious. Would you tell me where you know me from or what you want from me? I think you must know if I say that in fact, I am in search of the Argon. The Argon? What? In search of the... In search of the Argon? Gee! You'd be the legendary hero who comes one day according to tales to take the curse off our family? Excuse me, but what is so funny about it? <laughs> I, I apologize. It is simply that this is not how I imagined it as a child. You know, you're not exactly what a hero looks like in a classical tale. I agree with that, Mr. Candelas, but it also seems this is not a tale at all. Just call me Francisco. I'm not worthy of the Candela's name anymore. Don't talk like this. But I'm not. But this is not so important now. It is more important that I have here before me the man who brings my ancestor's legend alive and the hero who will bring freedom one day. Well, you would need that at the moment, Francisco. Yes, it's true. Because if you don't get me out of here in a short time, I will never teach you the curse of Alquerque. Alquerque? That's the name of the game. According to the tradition, the Moors brought it to Spain hundreds of years ago. 
they knew it by the name of El Quaquet. Then, thanks to the curse, it was slowly forgotten. I see. I would not like to miss the opportunity to get to know it. Please help me. Let me do everything I can for it. Of course. What are you interested in, Mr. Hunt? I have tried to sniff around in the city. I have discovered a surprising number of details, but you may think they are worth nothing in the absence of your honest confession. Just ask me, Mr. Hunt. I'll answer all your questions. Look, Mr. Hunt, I didn't do it. That sword was important to our family, since it was one of my grandfather's masterpieces. But one day my father gave it to Alonso Garcia de la Rica as a present. Perhaps the reasons he gave it to him will never be discovered. Because I'm sure my father did not act of his own accord. I did not see the beautiful weapon for a long time because it was my father who was at Mr. Alonso's beck and call until he died. Then of course I came. I basically worked for him for a few alms. Small maintenance, blacksmith jobs were my tasks quite a lot lately. It was strange to see the sword again. Yes, it is true that I did adore it. The old lord of the castle may have seen it, but also Hugo the butler. There's nothing about it. One day, I also noticed that my grandfather made a mistake in the family coat of arms. Maybe that is why he never sold the sword. True, this mistake with the child's head had never occurred to me before, but of course I didn't call the new owner's attention to it. And then I don't know more. Suddenly there was this Riojo stumping at the door of our house. Mr. Alonso was with him and that playboy, Eugenio. They arrested me. They questioned me. Then they simply locked me up. And now, nobody asks anything. It is interesting to hear what you are saying, Francisco, but I must admit it doesn't help much. In whose interest could it have been? Who could have stolen the sword? Mr. Alonso had just asked me to prepare the bars on the front windows of the palace. There are bars only protecting the back wall and the rooms on the ground floor. Anyone could break into that house and take the sword. Unfortunately, I don't know if something else was also taken at the same time. But any one of his acquaintances could have done it. There was an old general who never missed a chance to praise my grandfather's work. Since he was deaf, he spoke rather loudly. I myself could clearly hear that he offered almost a fortune. But then there is that cursed Ariaga, the dealer who was a regular visitor in the palace. Or Hugo, the butler. Maybe he is not afraid to lose his job. I have also wondered if perhaps Eugenio or the master himself planned a way to remove me as an obstacle to Carmen. I don't know. There is no way I can know. Yes, I am aware of these reasons. Miss Diaz Palencia told me about everything. She loves you deeply, Francisco. I know. And she can be certain that I love her too. Please tell her that I think of her very often. Will you be seeing her? Of course. She was so kind as to host me. I am staying in the late painter's room. Perfect. Perhaps this way there is someone to look after her. Will you be so kind, Mr. Hunt? You can count on me, Francisco. Look, I cannot give you an unbiased opinion of that man. The two families have not even been talking for years, so we cannot talk about the family in Ariaga's case. He is not married, has no children. He has two apprentices, some maids, and strange visitors. As you must know, we live across from his house. My room window overlooks the shop. I have witnessed several times rich clients incognito and shady characters creeping into his place late at night or at midnight. Who knows what he deals in? Do you think an art dealer can be involved in the theft of the work of art? No, I haven't thought of that, but it is absolutely possible. But since I've been sitting here behind the bars, there is no one to watch what happens at the shop. Unless... unless you could do it or ask my mother to watch. Well. I'd be glad to watch that man, but I believe your mother would be the better candidate. Yes, perhaps you are right. If you get me a pencil and paper, I'll write her a letter. You know, the friendship between the two families was perhaps made in heaven. 
Even our fathers loved each other like two brothers. True, Salvador lived in England for a long time, but I forgive him this, since otherwise he could not have returned with such an angel, Carmen. We were raised together. We came to know the world together. Our sole fortune is that we are not real siblings because we are free to be lovers. Although this love is burdened with a curse that is heavier than that of the Agon. Recently a rival appeared, none other than the young Eugenio. His only weapon is a piece of paper that Carmen's father signed and in which he gives me two months of life. Because in two months, Carmen will be 21 years old and she will have to marry Mr. Alonso's son. And I will surely kill him. And then myself. I love to listen to his stories, in which either he or someone he knew was the hero. He knew everything, always had something on his mind. He also taught me how to play the trumpet when I was a child, but unfortunately I have no ear for music, Mr. Hunt. However, I was better at painting and drawing than Carmen, even though she has a skillful hand too. Take a look at her embroidery. Salvador was like an uncle to me. I was deeply upset when he died. My mother is the most loving mother in the world. She served her family, husband, and children all her life. I think myself ungrateful that I leave her alone just when she would need my help. This is not what she deserves. My father was always hard on me, but I loved him very much. In the beginning, he was a real slave driver in the workshop, but as I grew up, he changed in my eyes. He became my role model as I began to understand what a treasure rests in his hands and that he was preparing to hand it all over to me, his son. He only told me about the legend of the Agon once he saw that I had changed. The butler? It's impossible for me to get a sense of him. Always reserved, a cold man. Mr. Alonso is satisfied with him and that is what counts. Did you know that he is also the gardener in the palace? It was a pleasant surprise to me. A villain. He calls himself a policeman, but he is only a puppet moved by money and ulterior motives. He took the words of the aristocrats like holy scripture. Perhaps if he had been more impartial, I would have had better chances. He considers the case closed, despite the fact that there isn't a single bit of evidence against me. Sergeant, would you please give me a piece of paper and a pencil to write down a few important things? Important things that a blacksmith has told you? <laughs> Impossible! But there are only a few small things. I would be grateful. Oh, really? Oh, that corrupt nature of his. Now I have to find him a cigar somewhere. A cigar. <laughs> oh, smells divine. It's yours, but please let me use paper and a pencil. What? Well, all right, all right. You'll find paper and pencil there on the desk. Thank you.
Thank you. Now write my mother saying you are free to enter our place, that she should let you look around my room and watch Ariaga. Be careful and not to lose sight of him. Done. Take her to our house as soon as possible, and tell my mother that I love her very, very much. I am fine. She need not worry about me. I'll do just that, Francisco. Hold out. I'll figure something out. See you later. See you later, Mr. Hunt. I hope you'll succeed. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, professor. Any news of my son? I was admitted into the prison and talked to your son. He asked me to tell you that he is all right. Don't worry. He sent this letter to you. You know, I would like to help. You believe in Francisco's innocence, don't you? Yes, without a doubt. I'll do everything I can to have him released. You know, as it turns out, he is the reason I've traveled thousands of miles to the city of Toledo. My son? It is a long story, but I promise I will tell you later. Please read the letter. Francisco asks me to allow you to take a look around our home. Naturally. Please, make yourself at home. If you are interested in my son's room, you'll find it upstairs. Thank you, Mrs. Candelas. Candelas's room doesn't disappoint me. Really, a perfect place for someone who wants to watch the art dealer live in opposite. The yearly folk signs.
Hmm, those photos again. Thank you. 